What's up, guys? It's a new episode of the DC Defender Show on the United Football Media YouTube channel. We've got all the news. It's a sad week, right? Cuts are coming, or cuts happen. More cuts are coming. The season's coming, so we can get excited about that. Media day and more. But, Alex, you know what to do. In the words of the immortal Rick, ravishing Rick Rude, hit the music. You guys, I I have to, uh, a little bit behind the curtain here. We never plan that out. Like, it's just like, all right, you ready to go? You ready to go? I say whatever I say, and then Alex comes up with whatever he wants to say. And uh, he throws me off sometimes. So, um, But we're back. Episode 8, first cuts. Your thoughts on, on how quick the process has gone. We'll start there. It's tough. We you know, we really talked about it. it. Yeah, last show we talked about it. I mean, there these there's some guys that got cut that probably will land other places and will probably contribute somewhere in the UFL season. It's very hard when you've got your first evaluations really cut, you know, narrowed down to like a week in a scrimmage. So, you know, there's so many factors that can come into play. So um, it's a challenge for the coaches and it, it's hard Um you don't have the mini camp. You don't have a lot of evaluation um, periods um, or time. So uh, I feel for some of these guys. I really do feel for all of them, really. But hopefully uh, they'll stay ready, right? If you uh, stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And from a coach's standpoint, we trust that they've watched practice and they watch film. And and these guys, you know, have been doing it a lot longer than, um, than we have. They know what they're looking for. Last thing I'll say, too, is, with a lot of these guys, just because they didn't make the defenders doesn't mean that they're not good football players at all, you know, or not worthy of being on the team. But it could be the need the defenders have right now. So I think that was interesting when we looked through the cuts. That kind of gives us some um, some additional vision into how the coaching staff feels about how this roster is set. So um, long winded ramble of saying it's tough. You just hate to see the names on there for those guys. And um, hopefully they'll all land in good spots. Yeah, I, I wore my AAU uh, coaching T-shirt tonight just because right. I've had to make a few cuts at AAU. But at the AAU, it's tough because it's a young kid. Um, that That's yeah. always tough. But at the same time, they're a lot – like you could tell who's a ball player and who's not. So mm -hmm. a lot of those cuts were very easy in my eyes just looking at it from a basketball perspective. It's more worried about the kid perspective, trying not to discourage him in that situation. But here – it's all professionals like yeah. all of the like it, it it's got to be so close for all these guys because first of all they all got brought in by this regime right it's not like yeah. like in uh, memphis you got a couple regimes coming together von hutchins reggie barlow kais and greg williams are all coming back o only one difference in the uh, coaching room i guess was the wide receiver with coach right. anderson Out outside of that Everyone else is coming back. So they've brought these guys in by their selection. So they already know what they were getting. And mm -hmm. then to make the decision, it, it's just got to be extremely tough. Yeah, it's tough. It is tough. So today we are going to talk about the trade. I thought that was huge. Uh, we'll get into it. First cuts. Question of the week. I'm going to throw Alex off with the question of the week. Ooh, that'll be fun. Uh, our defensive strengths, in my opinion, I think Alex kind of agrees there. Cut down day number two. We're not really going to talk about it, but I did want to talk about it briefly. It's March 23rd, so we got 12 days, which is eight days in front of uh, the home opener or the away opener. Um, and then we'll talk about media day because me and Alex kind of disagree on some uniforms. And we uh, we had the uniform power rankings, and I was like, wow, we're, we're way off a little bit here. Uh, Alex has shown his age in, the, in this vote. <laughs> so. All right, so first, the trade. I know it's real small, guys, but everyone's heard it. Uh, Jair Johnson comes over from the Stallions after five starts with the uh, USFL champions for Chauncey Rivers, who was here for, uh, what, 10 days? Um, not uh, not really here for a long time, but I think Vaughn Hutchins strikes again. I think he gets what he wants because Chauncey Rivers, we talked about it last week on the episode. I thought he was he was important because it gives you depth on the on the edge. But now you're trading away one of your strengths 
and you're bringing in a guy that you know was a chance before he got hurt was on the starting offensive line for the I, I would say the best spring team last year like oh, yeah. from start to finish um so you're bringing in a starter from a big school um I, I I just think this is a home run by Vaughn and that's that's all he does is hit home runs so <laughs> I mean I, I guess I guess I'm not shocked but at the same time I'm shocked because it happened during camp and Chauncey Rivers was the one guy like he was just here for 10 days and to be able to take a guy off the street and then ship him to Birmingham and get one of their starters for a guy that mm-hmm. was just off the street 10 days ago just tells you that Vaughn Vaughn's able to sell too right he's got to sell it to Potter too so I, I don't know who proposed to who but the fact that he was able to propose a guy that was off the street in street clothes 10 days ago for yeah. one of the starters last year just tells me that Vaughn just worked him. It was a great move. He, um, you know, this is one too that when they picked up Rivers, we both said, "Hey, boy, you're adding a lot of depth on that edge, you know, and and depth up front." But it, all along, it was a calculated move. You pick up Rivers, you trade for a need that we need some offensive line help. So I mean, it's like that that uh, saying when you're talking about checkers and chess. Um, you know, this this was a good move for us. And it when I saw the trade, I was like, ah, makes perfect sense. He's two steps ahead of where we are. So that's why he's the GM. Yeah, that's the reason why we we got to show with the waving flag, guys. I'm sorry, but this whole time I'm I'm viewing this, we changed the background, and I'm just I'm just in awe of the DC flag just waving in the background. So uh, don't mind me. This first episode. And in case you haven't figured it out, look at that subscribe. We're wanting people to subscribe. That's why it's a blinking orange. Well, Webb came up with that on his own, by the way. <laughs> but then we're gonna go to cuts. Um, I'm gonna run through the names. I I want. Yes. On a scale of one to ten, surprise, I guess, from you, from a couple guys. I, we won't go yep. through every single guy because obviously we weren't there. Uh, Elijah Blades, uh, the cornerback out of Buffalo. Adonis Boone, the tackle out of Louisville. Your thoughts? Because I thought he was a high prospect. Yeah, me too. And, and again, we didn't see the scrimmages in practice. We don't see how these guys come into camp. But the, both of those kind of surprised me a little bit, especially with Blades, because I think Blades was one we picked up from the Vipers, right? In the draft. Uh, yeah, yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I know we talked about both of these guys, but, you know, um, yeah, both. I mean, that tells me we know we're deep at cornerback, and that must, and that tells me that of the eight guys, I think, uh, ten guys we have locked in or we see on the offensive line, they feel pretty good about them too, to cut a yeah. guy like Adonis. Well, it, it also tells you that maybe the tackle, because as you can see, the T's all the way down the list, maybe the tackle was a weak spot for them. And that's mm-hmm. the reason why they went out and got uh, Jair uh, yep. in the trade. Ben Bresnahan, we talked about him a little bit last week. I I personally not shocked by this move. Right. Um, that, that's no disrespect to Be- Bresnahan, but uh, they brought in um, a tight end and Briley Moore's back, so guys yeah. that can catch the, catch the ball. So I'm not I'm not yep. shocked by that move. The next, the next three really did shock me. Uh, Isaiah Coulter, Mike Harley Jr., John Hightower, together they were defenders for about twenty-four days total. Three of them. Mm-hmm. Um, one was one was two days. By the time I got the post up on Friday, he was cut on Sunday. Your thoughts on the wide receiver and Trey Shopshire? We'll we'll throw that in there. And Shopshire and C.J. Johnson. We'll yeah. throw the, all those guys in there. Your thoughts on first of all the newly signed wide receivers getting cut so quickly yeah i mean uh, like i said the the you know they vaughn and these guys know what they're doing i mean there are a lot of receivers that are cut in there quite frankly um you know cj was one cj johnson out of east carolina he was one that i was pretty high on but then if you look at sort of the i'm not surprised with the receivers we see on the roster though now you know i'm I'm, as i take a quick look you know i see seven and all seven of them um you know, even even the cuts there could be tough. So, you know, the only thing that I can figure they bring these guys in, you open up a big competition for camp. Um, they wanted to give guys looks and judging on the new guys coming in and then moving out, maybe they weren't as impactful as the existing folks that we had in the wide receiver room. Yeah, they're all new signings. I, I almost am at looking at the outside of Vincent Smith and Kiki Kuti. Um, they were all new signings. Uh, the yeah. other two, obviously. So they did give the guys a chance that just were recently signed because they've signed three wide res- five wide receivers in the last That's month. True. So they kept Kuti uh, and they kept Vincent Smith. 
and they moved on from these guys. We talked about it before the show. This is where the cuts were going to come from because mm-hmm. there's so many wide receivers. Um, you go to uh, the defensive tackle. We'll go next. Donovan Jeter, Boogie Roberts. Shocked on both of these personally. Me too. Me. Boogie, Boogie. We you know we we followed for two years now, so th- this is kind of yeah. a personal. A personal one, but uh, I will always be a fan of Boogie Roberts. I I told Boogie when it came out, I I DM'd him and I was like, "Man, you got a fan for life." Yep. Uh, re- regardless of what you do, um, if he's if he's playing football and he continues to the dream, I'm rooting him on. But man, if he gets in front of that camera, talking yeah. sports or acting or anything like that, mm-hmm. he'll always have a fan for me. But well, these you're taking the deep tackle, yeah. I'm sorry. I was going to say along with Boogie, and I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, these you spring leagues provide opportunity on the field for coaches, um, you know, and then for the players, obviously, but even opportunities outside of playing. And I think Boogie has done a great job of like, you know, uh, when they when the, the United by football um, segment was out and then, part, you know, being able to take that and moving that into other opportunities to get in front of the camera. And, you know, that's his his degree is in broadcasting anyway. So I think. Um, no matter what Boogie does, he's going to be good at it. And no matter what Boogie does, I'm going to be a fan of his because he is just a, a class human being the whole way. And uh, what prof- how, what a professional athlete should be like as far as like carrying themselves and how they are with fans and whatnot. I have a lot of respect for that guy. Hey, you know, it's crazy. He was on part of that union negotiating the deal for all the players. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he lost his, his maulers. Then he goes to the Brahmas who lost his head coach. Like he's had a battle and, and yeah. he represented all the players at the same time. So he's a class act and uh, like Boogie. Boogie is always welcomed with the beer snakes. Let right on. Ask. Right on. Uh, and then we'll go to the other tackles. Uh, George Moore, Chidi Okiki, and Jake uh, Jack Plum. Your thoughts? Anything surprising? Not really. I mean, it's, it's tough. And again, I think that, and we've talked about it, you know, we don't, the practices aren't open. We don't get to see them. You don't get to see film. You know, I think for the, for the scrimmage, I saw two clips an interception by Kelly that looked like a pick six. I think they cut it off before he made it to the house. And then an interception that Francois threw when he was trying to hit uh, jazz Ferguson. Um, I saw two plays in the scrimmage. So I think with some of these, again, it's like, we see the names, um, you know, you can point to the route, the receivers, like you said, we brought in a bunch and then it looks like a bunch were let go. But it's just without seeing these guys, without you know, it's hard to say, hey, you know, that guy came in and he was way out of shape, or he kept getting beat, and I mean, it's pretty obvious he wasn't ready. It's just, um, it's it, it's it's tough to say why. From from these cuts, because you have what one, two, three, four defensive players out of all these mm-hmm. cuts, out of mm-hmm. the seventeen cuts. I think it's safe to say that they were working on the offense. They yeah. felt a little bit more secure on the defense, and they yeah. were working on the offense, and that included bringing up the other two quarterbacks up to speed. So do they bring in a Coulter and a Harley to kind of give them some notice, give them an opportunity quickly? But you're also providing targets for all three of and instead of just having seven receivers, right? Mm-hmm. You can't really split them off. If you're going three, four route wide, you're running something. You, you can't split them off. But if you have 12 receivers, now you can go three, four r- wide during drills with all three of your quarterbacks. That's uh, true. Get more they, reps. They call it a camp a camp arm, right? Yeah. In the NFL, they bring mm-hmm. in a quarterback to like for a pitch count for like Trevor Lawrence. I remember Kyle Slaughter got brought in yeah. the first time. It was just to limit the starter from getting over, over usage. Maybe this is a way to get all the quarterbacks up to speed because you are bringing in McClendon and Francois, which are – Potential weapons. I, yeah. I I really feel obviously JT is number one. Yeah, Me too. Tom is number Without one. Doubt. But maybe they were trying to get JT with his kind of like the top receivers, and then bring in these other guys to run mm-hmm. this stuff. And at the same time, now you got an injury in the during the season. Coulter already kind of knows the playbook. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Or or at mm-hmm. least knows the culture. Harley H- Hightower, Shropshire, like all these guys kind of know what's going on. So I I just think it's an interesting concept because there's all offense the, the, yeah. a, a lot of teams kind of were like even well this was just all offense outside of a couple yeah the offense is almost set you've got uh maybe when you look at the running back room that could still be um an area for one we know they kept three tight ends last year so we may even be set at tight end 
And then right now I see seven receivers, I think 27 total offensive players. So probably not going to see too many more cuts on offense. Yeah. I, 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 I think coach guys kind of knows who, what he's gotten. Um, mm-hmm. he'll kind of run with that. Mm-hmm. Um, Outside of Boogie, because I know we'll both say that, the biggest shock on this list would be. That wasn't my question of the week. I'm, I'm coming in hot this week. Good. I, I need you to. Uh, I've been kind of hard on you on Twitter and, and on Discord, so I got it coming, I guess. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, um, I'd kind of thought for some reason, and, and, again, I hadn't seen him playing a bit, but Donovan Jeter, along with Boogie, you know, he's a, a Michigan guy, you know, athletic. The deep guy in the middle uh that one kind of surprised me a, a little bit because for some reason when when i first saw the news about boogie i thought ah well you know they maybe you know the jeter st- you know he's gonna stay and then when he was cut too i was kind of like wow okay um jeter or or you know again johnson i bought stock in him kind of like you you did in fernando jordan uh back uh with the maulers <laughs> you know i was all over cj johnson so those two probably would be the biggest two hey, outside, yeah, so of boogie, right. outside of boogie so right now, uh, the defensive line, you got T.J. Barr and Joe Wallace, which obviously you're a big fan of. Yep. Tariq is Tisdale, which if we know anything about Tisdale, he gets to the quarterback. He played two games, got two sacks. Niles Scott, who is a returner, and uh, Dennis Johnson from Grand Valley State, which they signed in October. It's like they brought back guys that they, they know really well, XFL mm-hmm. guys mm-hmm. in that um, situation. So mm-hmm. I, I guess Jeter would be – one of mine as well, but Mike Harley kind of, when he got brought on, he's the all time receptions leader at the university of Miami. Yeah. Like, that's, saying like that, that's yeah. That, that's saying something when you compare all, and I know they throw the ball a lot more now, but that mm-hmm. means that he performed for three or four years to be able to compete with, you know, the, the big wide receiver, Andre Johnson went there, man. And this yeah. guy's got Andre Johnson. I I'm showing my age here, but like Andre Johnson's about the same age as me. Right. And, like, he was the guy. He was the guy in college. He's a little bit older than me, actually, because 2001, I was graduating high school. He was at college, so he's a little bit older. But he he was the guy. And the, the fact right. that – and I know he left school early and everything, but he, he was, like, a top-notch guy. And this guy, Mike Harley Jr., comes in and breaks all those records for receptions. And I know the offenses are, def- are mm-hmm. different now, but, like, the fact that they're able – Michael Irv – like, they I had they, they had they had legend yeah you're gonna show when you were a kid oh yeah. <laughs> but, but Randall they, Hill they had, <laughs> they, <laughs> they had legends there for so many years and for Mike Harley I thought he might have been able to make it to the next level at least mm-hmm. maybe down to the 58 but that I guess outside of the boogie Jeter kind of uh selections Mike Harley really stood out for me yeah. well we still have Cameron Harris. Yeah, we do. We do. So we go to corners galore. This room is so deep. We've talked about it numerous times. I still think there's a cut in here. I I think one of the eight cuts comes from here. I'm not going to throw you on the because obviously we're not at practice. We're we're not we're not there to watch. I just think this might be the deepest room that no one's talking about in the UFL. Do you agree or do you disagree? I agree. You think only one cut? I I think, yeah, you got to have depth. Two cuts. I'm thinking. We've got 27 on offense now as it stands, right? And you don't forget yep. your specialist. Yep. We've got a ton of linebackers still in there, right? And you look at it, I mean, how many corners do you need? Right? Yeah. So, so uh, five. you're saying on on offense? Yeah, so five. We've got six right now, right? There's seven on that list. Michael Joseph, uh, Conley, and Thua Kelly, DeAndre Baker, Isaiah Johnson, Nadir Ross. Who am I? Who did did I mess that up? Kelly, you got Conley, Neal. Oh, uh, uh, Dewan Neal. Dewan Neal is on the suspended list. He, That's the reason why. Right. All right. So, 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 one. so if he stays on the right. suspended list. You're already you're down to six. Yeah, let's take one because so five would be all five corners would be all you could take. I think wow. that'd be the max. See, I I would say because you got five safeties, I think you go down to four safeties. So there's one, right? So you're you're we got to cut eight players. 
You're saying offense is kind of set, right? Yeah, I mean, you got probably we, running we back, were, maybe. Or a running back that could get cut. Well, you got seven offense. receivers right now. Seven? Yeah, so I maybe a, a receiver? Maybe a receiver, maybe a running back. They get you at 25 on the offensive side of the ball. Three specialists. It gets you 56, you right? Eight. Yeah, it, it gets you down to 56 if you cut two from offense right. and special teams. So right. now you got to get six more. Um, All from defense. So one edge, I, I guess you're kind of right. One defensive line, one edge, two linebackers, and then two DBs. That or, sound about right? Yeah, or three linebackers. I mean, yeah. but, but you can't. No, because right now looks like they have eight linebackers still in camp. Across the Will, the Mike, and the Sam. You might have two cuts in there. It's tough. God, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't like as much as I always say like I love the GM stuff. This is yeah. the part that I, that I would dread because yeah, um, the, it's it's tough. The only other thing you hit on too, and it could be risky, is we got ten guys on the offensive line right now. You could possibly have a cut there. And then have one of these guys that can double up as a guard or center or tackle. Because we were talking about that, the versatility in terms of some of these linemen playing other positions. You could do that. You could maybe go with eight, nine yeah. offensive linemen instead of the full two deep with 10. Yeah. I, it, he, he's got – Vaughn and staff, they've got a, a ton of different ways they can go with this. But yeah. I think we both agree it's defense that's going to be oh, taking yeah. the brunt of the next cut. So Absolutely. Ready for the question of the week? Oh, the, I don't know. Kind of scared me now. We'll see. Are you sure? I'm ready. Bring it on. Question of the week is what the heck are you thinking with these uniform rankings? <laughs> what are you thinking with these uh, uniform rankings? You thought it was going to be some kind of football question, like a real football question. Yeah, so we, we all voted in the United Football Media. Uh, come up power rankings for the uniforms after media day. Mm -hmm. Mine's on uh, your left, and Alex is on the right. Okay, we're we're gonna look at this. We're gonna look at this. We disagree with the Brahmas the most, which yeah. ironically is Week One's <laughs> opponent. Yeah. Why do you hate the Brahmas jersey? So, first of all, their logo. First of all, the name is terrible. I know we're, this is the optics of the uniform, but. I don't like the logo that all gray with kind of like the, there's like, it's just kind of like, it's like a car. They forgot to paint. Right. And it's like a, you know, the whole thing, the whole Brahma's, I mean, I just don't, they should change their name to the San Antonio gunslingers honor the USFL gunslingers from the eighties, go back to the blue and, and, and green and maybe even play at Alamo stadium. And, and I might vote them higher than seventh. Why do you love them so much? What's what's so special about that uniform? I I, th I think their colors are unique. I love yellow and black together. First of all, it's yellow and gray. Really, I right. think uh, Brahmas. There's not another Brahmas sports team out there. There's a reason they're, why they're, there's not another Brahma sports team no, out there. Our our guy um, <laughs> Josh at the Brahmas bullpen. He's a good. He dude. just it, yeah. He does the show from the cow pasture, which is crazy that he does it outside because you never know by watching right. it. But he actually uh, is getting a Brahma. Um, to add to his, uh, what are they heard? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not country enough. Josh will. I'm, I'm sure he'll tell us. He watches all the stuff. And he, this past week, he wore uh, Jay's sunglasses, so I know he'll say something. But uh, and he called my cuddly blanket. Uh, staff. Cuddly blanket. Cuddly, not a, cuddly blanket. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's throwing shots at me. So um, he's got two weeks. You're two throwing weeks. Yeah, you're it. throwing shots at him with this jersey ranking because I think you're way off. I, th I think it's sleek looking. I think the color combination is different. I think the logo is different. I just I just think it fits. It fits spring football. And where do you, where do you have Memphis? You have Memphis five. I have them two. Yeah. You don't like the all blue on blue? That's okay. I mean, like the the logo is good. I'm I'm more of a, again. Give me the uh, you know. Whenever I think of showboats, I see Reggie White in the shirt that's all tucked up under the gonna shoulder that. pads with the silver yeah. helmet. And uh, Memphis, 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 Memphis. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 not bad. Um, I put them five. Put them five. Yeah. 
in there. Yeah. Michigan, we both had high up there. Uh, you yeah. had them at two, I had them at three, but yeah. What are your they thoughts kinda, on the new plum on plum? Hate it. I would have stuck with the uh, I'm old school. Give me the 1983 Bobby A. Bear with the mullet, uh, the hair hanging out of the back of the jersey. Um, I think the pants were, I mean, they had it right. Um, the plum on plum would be different for like an, you know, an alternate, you know, some, you know, one special game or whatever. But it's kind of like, like you Easter know, Sunday. <laughs> like Easter Sunday. Go, you look like a big <laughs> Easter egg with a champagne helmet on. But uh, yeah, that they, they, you know, still when you look at how they ranked out, I still had them pretty high. Um, and of course, that's not a homer pick on DC, by the way. I like that Nebraska Cornhusker road. You know, that was bad back in the day because, you know, when, when when I was a kid growing up, you know, you always wore, you had like uh, people didn't wear like the same color pants and jerseys with the helmets. You know, that was kind of like a cool look. You only went with that look for big games. So when Nebraska played like Oklahoma and they came out with the red pants and the red shirts and the white hats, that was big time stuff. So, you know, defenders have that look every every game, which is uh, they look pretty tough. Actually, if you watch Jay's uh, show where he breaks down his uniform rankings, the two stripes, I never noticed that on the leg. Mm -hmm. um, that is a dedication to the flag that's waving behind our thing, really? our our background. It's a dedication. And that that's the coolest thing that the um, I believe the XFL did better than the NFL. I mean, the USFL, because mm -hmm. like the Brahmas, the Brahmas got the as the Hisp the Hispanic words, right? And they, mm -hmm. they have the, I think it's the Aztecs. I'm not 100% sure mm -hmm. if it's the Aztecs, but they got the, like, everything that's dedicated to the city. You got the um, defenders that have a lot of just stripes and kind of basic kind of, and with the camo helmets and all that. Like, it mm -hmm. just seems like it clicks with the city. And I think the XFL did that. Even Houston at eight, right? We both have yeah. them at eight because, first of all, Ace has no, like, I, but, but it connects to the city. It connects the city with the the numbers that are two different tones, um, with the Texas flag. It connects the city, and th that's what I think that the XFL did a lot better than the USFL. They connected the city. Y you're connecting it back to Herschel Walker and Doug Flutie and people that retired before most of these young kids that are doing these shows rankings were even born. So you're connecting to what they watch on on streaming while you watch it on VHS. Yeah, that's well, that, that's very, very true. But I can remember, you know, our pants, we had the, you know, I think Scout was all, calling those big obnoxious stripes on the side of the pants, man. We had those big, I mean, the stripe didn't stop halfway up and it wasn't like had lines through it. It was a solid stripe and it was about that wide and it went all the way down the side of the leg. And you just thought you were badder than bad. So, you know, when the Stallions kind of kept that, it was, um, it was definitely a cool move. And I don't know if you've seen the, the, the lettering around the Brahma's neck in the in yeah. the sort of like you were talking about. But if you yeah. can read like Aztec or, or whatever that um, lettering is, it's it reads stupid nickname right across the, uh, <laughs> the collar. <laughs> Josh is going to love you right now. Josh is going to love you. Um, uh, one another big, uh, big disagreement that we have <laughs> is the Stallions. You love the stallions. I can't stand the red khaki. That just remind, and I know it's supposed to be gold, but it in my eyes, maybe maybe I'm wrong here. And believe me, stallion fans have already ripped us for the polar opposite uniform rankings. So I, I know I'm wrong here in Birmingham. I'm running in 2024 for uh, Birmingham yeah, mayor. <laughs> but, but like the stallions just look old. They just it just looks it doesn't look as modern as the other jerseys and maybe that that's the reason why i'm against it that's why i put it at three classic i love the shoulder stripe the uh sleeve stripes it's a classic sleeve stripe got the thick stripe through the top big stripe on the side got to go with the big stri stripe on the side of the pants those other fancy like air nah give me the 80s look you gotta, man. You gotta remember a lot of the a lot of these kids that um are younger than you and i you know they wear their pants real tight too now, and like they they have a completely different. Yeah, I grew up in the '90s. You know where I was watching like the Fab Five with, you know, th they had their shorts down to their shins, and now like I'm coaching these these high schoolers, and they want these little like uh, John Stockton shorts, and I'm yeah. like, no man, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I'm good. I'm with you, Webb, on that one. Nice nice throwback to the Fab Five there too with the baggy pants. You gotta love that, but. Uh... <laughs> So yeah, the, both we, of us had we the both, battle hawks about the same. Yeah, battle hawks were about the same. Renegades, you had them a little higher. Mm. Um, I had them at their middle of the pack. I think we both agree with that. Yeah. Um, 
I, the biggest difference really was San Antonio. The rest, yeah. we're, we're kind of in the same ballpark. Yeah, so. you're not too far off. Houston is awful. I mean, they missed such an opportunity. Um, you know, if you go back even and look at like the Oilers from uh, when when they had the Oilers there, that was just such a classic look. And I know they caught, I guess, some some crap about using the old Derek on the side of the helmets and some potential, um, I guess, copyright infringement with um, yeah. the Oilers and whatnot, but. That that Texas State helmet is just um atrocity. I mean, I just it's it's horrible. They love I mean, their flag there, man. They love their flag. Put it on the sleeve. Get us give me a solid colored helmet. Give me something that looks I mean, that's just that hard on the eyes. That's all right. We don't have we'll have to watch them for 10 weeks. We don't have to worry about watching them in the playoffs. Yeah. And and Houston, you know, they put them on ESPN two in regional games. Like they, they already know where they're going. So. They know where they're going. they're going. Hey, I do have one question for you about the yeah. um about the uh stallion juniors before we wrap up. How yeah. how 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 good do you think Chris Blewett's leg's gonna look when he swings through and hits that ball with that big stripe on the side of those pants? Not as good as Davin Bellamy blocking them and returning it for for a kick six. <laughs> it's as okay. simple as that. It's simple as that. I, I I'm it. sorry, Chris Blewett. I appreciate what you did for the Maulers. But we've moved on. I'm red and white now, and and you're wearing the pon- pony stuff. Tez is my guy. Tez is yeah. my guy. I, I love. love I, Me too. I love Mark Gilbert, Gilbert Island. I, I love. I love them. I yeah. hope that if Boogie signs somewhere, I hope he goes to Birmingham with his friends. Yep. But man, you you were you were that that pony. No thanks. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, Chris Blewett. I'm sorry. I'm 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 absolutely sorry. Yeah. I'm I, I I hope you I hope you make every single kick. But mm-hmm. I hope you lose every single game. Simply. Now, now every single Week guy four. you just you just mentioned came on our show. Like they were. I mean, yeah. Tez has been on our show a couple of times. Yeah. Blewett came on. Hell, he 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 woke up and got out of bed to come on our show. Right? <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> did. He did. Good <laughs> bunch of guys. Good bunch of guys yeah. for sure. But I hope they go zero and ten. So. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Sorry, Tez. I love you. I've I will still say you're the defensive player of the year last year, but. No, I'm I'm good, but I'm with you. Birmingham, Birmingham, thumbs down. I'm with you. Anyways, made it through another one. This one was a little bit more fun. We yeah, we made it a little bit more fun at the end after a uh, sad beginning, really. Yeah, with all the cuts and everything. Do it again next week. Do it again next week. What is it? This week, next week, and the and then the preview show, right? Yeah, yep. the opening game, and then we start. Yeah, so next week, next week will be kind of our first, our final, you know, preseason kind of um, preview, I guess. Uh, and then it's Brahmas week. We 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 will dissect the Brahmas a little bit. Um, we'll know our cuts by that time. Yeah. We're gonna try to film this Monday nights, right? Yeah, come out Tuesday mornings. Yeah. So you you got a day to digest because we play a lot of Sundays, yeah, and Saturdays obviously. Um, but we play a lot of Sundays. You get a day to digest it, and then we're going to talk about it and preview for the next week. Yeah. Not, um, but I enjoy doing this with you. I'm excited. We're actually going to do this with actual real football. So it's coming. Yeah, it's coming up. And then you know, I looked at the last show. I think we were went well up over 400 views. So. Yeah. Thanks for the, uh, the the defender fans and faithful that have been you know so good watching the show and whatnot. And it's funny. I'm not a big Twitter guy. Didn't have a lot. Of, I just started last year, and it's funny now. All of the uh, invites I get are like DC Nation, DC Football, this DC, yeah. and it's like really cool. So um, I'm really appreciate you guys watching us. So, can't wait to meet some of you guys in person down there. Sometimes, sometimes I try to scour Twitter uh, by just searching defenders. And mm-hmm. the craziest thing is you are the first you come up before anyone else. When I when I when I search DC defenders, it's Alex first, and then it's you, and then it's Lemonhead or Lemon Guy, right? Nice. And then it's the beer snakes defenders and all, all the other fan beer snakes and lemonheads. Yeah. But you come up before the actual DC defenders and I'm searching for, it, and I'm like, what is going on here? Like, when did Alex become the guy? But I guess it's just board. meant to be. I don't know. Maybe Twitter is like this AI stuff. They figured I'm the smartest one out of the bunch. So we'll just, you know, <laughs> yeah. boy, I can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Same time uh, next week. We can do it same time next week. And until then, 
So long, everybody. All right, shields up. Webb and Alex out.